Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. If you've seen my other videos, you know that my aim is to make HSC Economics concepts easy to understand. But just knowing the concepts in your head is not enough to get a band six. You need to make sure that you're answering the question. A common reason that students lose marks is because they don't know how to structure their written responses to address the marking criteria. Today we will look at written response questions commonly asked in economics and how to approach them. First, let's look at Ness's glossary of key terms. The glossary of key terms is a list of directive verbs that every HSC subject uses in assessments and examinations. It also has definitions of these verbs. Get familiar with this glossary as it is very useful for learning how to address criteria in HSC assessments. You're basically learning the language of the marker. However, not every one of these verbs are applicable to economics. So I'm gonna take a selection of these verbs that have been used in HSC past papers. And then I'll give you some tips to maximize your marks. Let's start with some easy ones, like the one to two markers. Define is one of the most basic short answer questions. Being able to define is also an essential skill that is used in extended responses and the more complex short answer questions. To define means to state the meaning and identify essential qualities. You'll only get the marks if you include all the essential ingredients in the definition, not for providing vague characteristics or examples. For example, let's define unemployment. Unemployment is defined as the situation where a person is not employed and is actively seeking work. If you simply say that unemployment is, I don't know, when someone doesn't have a job, you have given me a general characteristic and that's not enough to get the marks. You can use different wording, but you will lose marks if you don't include the essential ingredient that the person must be actively seeking. This is why I tell my students that a good way of revising definitions is to identify, highlight, and memorize the keywords and components in the definition. Next. A common two mark question in economics is distinguish. This means to recognize as being distinct or different from, or to note differences in between. A simple way of approaching distinguish questions is by providing definitions of the two terms and then putting a conjunction in between them, like whereas, however, conversely, on the other hand, and so on. Let's try this HSC question from 2020. Distinguish between structural and cyclical unemployment for two marks. And here's the sample answer from the marking guide. As you can see, they start with a definition of structural unemployment with the essential characteristics. They then put in a conjunction word, whereas. And here's the definition of cyclical unemployment. Boom, easy two marks. Again, get good at this type of question by accurately memorizing definitions. Another common one to two marker is calculate. Here's the nested definition and it's pretty self-explanatory, but let me give you some advice while we're here. Practice and repetition. The only way to get good at maths is through repeated practice. You'll get faster, more accurate, and you'll better understand and memorize formulas along the way. So those are the common one to two mark short answer questions. Let's go into the two to four mark questions. Describe and outline are very common first or second questions in short answers, and they're quite similar. Describe is usually a little bit easier. It can be sometimes treated as a two mark defined question with more characteristics and details to include. It can also be interchangeable with outline as this also requires you to highlight the main features. Outline has the potential to be worth more marks though, in which case you may want to treat like a mini explain question. These types of questions can range between two to four marks, depending on the characteristics and detail and depth that's required. You can use the marks and lines allocated to these questions as indicators to the approach you should take and the amount of detail and depth to include. All right, now we're gonna get into the more weightier questions. These following questions are more about unpacking the relationships and the implications of these concepts. These can vary in complexity and therefore can appear both in short answer questions and extended responses. First up, let's look at explain. This and analyze are my personal favorites because to me, mastering economics is all about being able to clearly link cause and effect. So in written responses, think of your answer as a chain that links cause to effect. Again, the allocated marks and lines will be indicators of how thorough this link needs to be. Students will lose marks if they skip steps in this link. For example, a four mark question to explain how A leads to E would require the student to go A leads to B, which leads to C and D, resulting in effect E. Marks will be lost if you go uh, A leads to B and I don't know, that results in E. You'd be skipping steps, leaving the marker asking how or why, showing a lack of detail, and this will cost you marks. Let's look at an example of 2020's HSC. Explain how decrease in aggregate demand can lead to underemployment of labor in an economy for four marks. This requires you to make a four mark link from the cause, which is decrease in aggregate demand to the effect, which is underemployment. Now watch this sample answer from the marking guide. 
A decrease in aggregate demand, A, leads to B, lower levels of consumption, which may lead to C, businesses reducing the levels of production, resulting in D, a lower demand for labor. This then results in E, the effect, increased underemployment, if businesses cut working hours for staff rather than firing them altogether. You can also include more detail by showing that you know the definitions. As you can see, the definitions of the cause and effect are integrated into this answer. Consumption is a key component of aggregate demand and underemployment is when workers want to work more hours. Another verb that can be used in either short answers or extended responses is analyze. It's very similar to explain in that you must link cause and effect, but this time they're called components and implications. And analyze also allows for more complex links or relationships. If explain looks like a chain from cause and effect like this, analyze would look like a chain that has many beginnings, which are the causes and components, and many implications, which are the effects. And this may require multiple links. Let's look at a simple example. Analyze how one possible strategy to reduce the budget deficit could affect income distribution. And here's a sample answer that shows how a clear step-by-step -step link from GST to its implications on the budget deficit and income distribution. The link from GST to the budget deficit is government revenue. And this sample answer also makes a clear link to income distribution by explaining what a regressive tax is and the specific impact on low income households. As you can see, in its simplest form, you can treat it like an explain question with multiple links to cover. But analyze can often be used for an extended response question too, in which case you should be devoting whole paragraphs and sections to unpack the links. For example, here's an analyze question from 2018's HSC exam. Analyze the causes of unemployment and the effects on the Australian economy for 20 marks. In an essay like this, you would want to use half your essay exploring the types of causes of unemployment and making clear links to the various effects. For example, you can explore cyclical and structural unemployment and their examples in your first two body paragraphs and then the effects over two more body paragraphs. Alternatively, you can unpack cyclical unemployment and give an example in your first body paragraph and follow up with effects and then do the same with structural unemployment and then an effects paragraph. Either way, you'll be spending half your essay on causes and half on effects on this analyzed question. Next, let's talk about the verb discuss. It means to identify issues and provide points for and or against. Students are encouraged to provide opposing points, for and against. So in a question like 2020's question 23C, you want to give three marks of detail on the positives and three marks of detail on the negatives. As you can see here, half the sample answer is on benefits like improving the competitiveness and creating employment opportunities. Then the second half starts with however to mark the flip to the opposing arguments, like loss of domestic employment opportunities. However, it is worth noting that you're not always required to give opposing points. The glossary also says points for or against. In some questions, you could get full marks by giving points that complement each other, as long as they're distinct points. Another way to give distinct points is to contrast short-term versus long-term effects. For example, this question obviously limits your points to only arguments for protection. That's why you see in the sample answer that you can see the full marks without giving opposing arguments. It only has arguments in favor of protection, like dumping and the infant industry argument. One more thing about discuss questions. You can't just list points for and or against. You must describe and outline each point to show clear and comprehensive understanding. All right, now we've gone to some of the most advanced verbs, evaluate and assess. They have very similar definitions and the approaches to these types of questions are pretty much identical. They both require you to make a judgment based on evidence or criteria. An effective response would build up evidence with examples and stats towards a clear and informed judgment about the subject. For example, to approach this question from 2020, you would start with introducing examples of macroeconomic policies, their aims and how they work. You must then refer to stats such as changes in economic growth rates and unemployment rates resulting from these examples. By doing this, you have evidence to make a judgment on their effectiveness. You can also explore the limitations in order to add more depth to your judgment. One more verb that is used in economics is examine. Students often find this one confusing because the glossary is quite vague about what the response should look like. How you approach this type of question will depend on the context, but it's safe to structure an answer as if this is an analyzed question because the same skills to show clear and comprehensive understanding is applicable here. Let's look at this example from 2019. You won't get full marks for just listing or sketching two reasons. You can see from these sample answers that there are two reasons with two marks worth of detail in each. There are clear links from the reasons to the difference in living standards. There are a few more verbs that are often used in economics. I'll list them here, but I won't go through them in detail because the Nessa definitions are quite straightforward. If you have any questions about them, you can leave a comment here or contact me via my website or social media. There are also questions that are not defined by Nessa because they're self-explanatory. 
they include questions like what is, how or why, or to what extent. The marking criteria often requires students to show clear and comprehensive understanding. So those are the possible types of questions asked in economics. It's a lot to take in. I have another video coming that is specifically to make extended responses easy. Why don't you let me know in the comments if you think that's something that could help you. In the meantime, I've covered these types of questions in my workbook. Check it out in my website. 100% of the proceeds go to charity. Additionally, if you would like some personalized feedback from a HSC Marcus perspective, reach out to me via the website, email, or social media. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the next video. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share this video. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC economics easy for you. See you next time.